Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you all my most favorite pictures I've taken using my digital microscope. I just have a cheap little $30 digital microscope and I am always amazed at the things I find on my mineral specimens once I get home from collecting. I hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to click like down below. Be sure to stay till the end because that's where I show the best, which is the quartz inclusions. And somewhere in the middle of the video, I got hematite in fluorite from Madoc. So I hope you enjoy this video. And if you want a part two, let me know in the comments below. So about four years ago, I found these perfect little spheres of malachite, dark green, absolutely beautiful. These were from the shield drive road cut down near Arn Prior. It was a fresh road blast road cut about four years ago. I've spoken to the people on the Mindat website. There, some of them were debating whether it was marcasite or malachite, but one guy did send them off to be tested and it came back as malachite. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Perfect green. You can see that one sphere there bridging the gap between two calcite crystals. Absolutely beautiful. Probably one of my best microscopic mineral finds ever, but there's a whole lot more to come in this video. Excellent find. Beautiful. So up next, galena crystals. Microscopic galena crystals, Southern Ontario limestone quarry. What I find fascinating about this particular crystal right here is that perfect little round circle. I have no idea what would cause that to be on there, but these are just super microscopic galena crystals. Some were from the Beamsville Quarry, some were from the Spring Creek, also the Thor Thorold Quarry down in the Niagara Falls. But overall, they're absolutely beautiful. And it's just amazing how much time you can spend with one of these little microscopes just trying to see that perfect view and find that perfect crystal. But just look at these. Absolutely crazy that Mother Nature can do this. Beautiful. Now this next one, this was just a perfect little floating crystal on some paper towels. That's why it has that funny look. So here is a perfect little Galena crystal sitting on a Spellerate crystal. Absolutely beautiful. Again, another picture of that. Super microscopic. And coming up here, another arrow, because this one's a little harder to see, but that's an even more well-formed Galena crystal. And now we're getting into the tremolite or actinolite, whatever you prefer. I'm sure it's up for debate. I'm just going to call it tremolite. I think some of these come from the large Memora mine quarry. I got them years back and it never surprises me what I see, especially when I start dissolving stuff. The amount of these tiny crystals that are embedded in the calcite that start popping out. Absolutely beautiful. I'm just going to let you enjoy the pictures for a few seconds. Absolutely crazy. There's an end of a perfectly terminated crystal, multiple step faces on it. I mean, how much better than that does it get? Just a side view of a whole bunch of crystals growing together. Beautiful dark green color. And we are right in to the fluorite from Madoc. I can't say what site this came from, but these are perfect little orangey red spheres of hematite. Absolutely crazy. Maybe this is the best uh, microscopic mineral crystal I've ever found, but that one sphere at the top of that picture in particular, super vivid. Now, not all sites in Madoc have these, only certain ones, but to me, it's just amazing how this can happen. The dark black stuff is bitumen or hydrocarbons, however you like to say it. Just beautiful. What can I say? I hope you enjoy these pictures as much as I do. Coming up, a whole different mineral embedded in the fluorite. These ones have a, kind of a soccer ball shape, so I'm not sure if they're marcasite maybe, but there's a couple different colors. Some are red and some are silver, as you can see in this picture. So I'm not quite sure what they are. Maybe if you know, add some comments below and let me know because other than the hematite, I'm not sure what it could be. And here's a little bit of ferrite, again with the hydrocarbons on it. Beautiful. And of course, more fluorite with the hydrocarbons on it. Coming up next, 
Rutil. And this is from the Miller property out near Eganville. I had to talk to the guys on the Mindas site that advised me that it was Rutil. As you can see, it's got that 60 degree uh, angles between the crystals, which is indicative of Rutil. I found these when you first go into the site and you drive up and you park on that kind of bedrock terrace at the main digging area. And I basically found them right there. But when I first saw these on the digital microscope, I was just blown away. It kind of looks like the Superman Fortress of Solitude has all these interlocking crystals. It's just crazy. Beautiful. Now I think in these particular images, it's got a little bit of the blue color that's coming from the light from the little digital microscope. But overall, it's just uh, crazy. It was just that one time on the site I found these and since then, nothing. Rutil from the Miller property in Eganville or the smart mine, whatever you want to call it. I know there's two or three sites in that one area. Absolutely stunning. Maybe one day I'll get a really good camera and do some really good microscopic pictures. But for right now, the digital microscope for $30, you can't go wrong. Up next, I picked this specimen up at the Wallingford back mine down in Quebec about six or seven years ago, and I believe it is pyrite pseudomorphed in aluminite. So at least that's what I've been told, and that's what the experts say, so I'm going with it. But either way, it's not radioactive. It does have that kind of rusty color indicative of radioactives, but it isn't. So pyrite pseudomorph as aluminite. A nice little find from the Wallingford back mine down in Quebec. And here we have purple fluorite with tiny little purple bubble inclusions. Actually, I'm not sure if these are inclusions because I'm not sure they're inside the crystal or whether they're just on the very outside of the crystal. Either way, it looks awesome when you look at it under a digital microscope. I'm always fascinated how with these purple fluorite crystals from Niagara Falls, when you, when you look at them on the side, how you get that vivid purple on the edge, plus those tiny little purple dots running through. It's just crazy to look at. Absolutely beautiful. On to the next specimen. Up next, perfect little marcassite crystals. They look like keys sitting on a perfect little white dolomite crystal embedded in probably fluorite, maybe calcite, but I believe it's fluorite. It's amazing how these crystals actually take the shape of a key. It's absolutely crazy. Very hard to truly focus in and get a good picture of these. Sometimes if you get them on the side like this one, you get that perfect gold color, which really shows off that it looks like a key. But it's absolutely amazing that these dolomite crystals will have these little marcassite crystals in them, and then it'll actually be embedded in the fluorite or perhaps selenite like this photo here. It's just amazing. Crazy, beautiful, mother nature at its finest. I recommend that everybody get a digital microscope because it's fun just to see stuff like this. Like that's a perfectly clear dolomite crystal with marcassite frozen in fluorite. It's crazy. I'm not even sure what to say. I hope you enjoy the pictures. Beautiful. I wonder what's up next. Well, this is one of my oddities. I saw this rock out hiking in southern Ontario. It's a glacial erratic. It was brought down here by the glaciers and deposited. It had some quartz on it and it had some mica. It also had some gold and blue on it, which kind of looks like spray paint, but I just don't think it is. So I chipped some off. I brought it home. Now to me, these pictures under the digital microscope do not look like what spray paint would look like when you look at it up close. To me, this is mineralization. You can see these tiny little blue and the green dots. Sometimes you get the gold kind of in between. To me, this is natural mineralization. I do not believe that this is spray paint. Let me know in the comments below what you think this is. Spray paint or natural mineralization? And here we have perfect little tiny baby blue celestine crystals on dolomite with maybe a little bit of marcassite or pyrite in there. 
Southern Ontario Limestone Quarry. I believe this was from the Thorold Quarry on a Walker Mineralogical Club trip. Super crystal clear, super tiny, doesn't get much better than that. Tiny, well-formed crystals. I'm just sitting here enjoying the view. Pink Dolomite, that's indicative of the Niagara Falls area. Crazy, Celestine on Dolomite. What's up next? This is from Titanite Hill, out near Wilberforce, Torrey Hill more specifically. Perfectly tiny little garnet on Floral Richterite. Didn't even notice it until I got home and checked it out. Crazy tiny little crystal. In this next view, it's a little more gemmy, a little more well-formed. And this last picture, it's just crazy how gemmy that crystal is and how sharp it is. Back to the Marmora Iron Mine, some super microscopic epidote crystals, super gemmy green, crazily clear, stunning. I'm always amazed at what pops out when I start dissolving the calcite. I'd love to get back to this location. Here are some super microscopic actinolite crystals. Crazy. Now this one, I had to add the arrow because you can see that little crystal there. And I'm not sure what that is. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I can't figure it out. I believe this one was from the Marmora Iron Mine. Again, you can see it there. It's hard to see top left side. Another picture, it's right in the middle there. I'm not sure what that crystal is. I believe there's some quartz and epidote and actinolite around it. Here's some perfectly tiny actinolite crystals embedded in calcite. Just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'd love to get back to that mine, more, more iron mine. Again, actinolite crystals with calcite, maybe a little quartz in there. Some more epidote crystals. Super crystal clear. I see arsenal pyrite crystals. I believe these were from a mine down near Madoc. I had to find some calcite. You can see the crystals in it and dissolve it. Super tiny little crystals. You know, other than the marcasite and the pyrite that kind of have the gold color, this has more of a silver look to it. I'd like to find some more because I need a good specimen for my collection and right now I don't have one. But this tiny little one, it is nice. It's fun to look at, that's for sure. This next specimen is a one-off photo. This is a perfect little sphellarite crystal in some purple fluorite with perfect zoning in there from the world-famous Montrose Dumps in Niagara Falls. Just the one picture of it though, so I hope you enjoy so this one, I'm taking a long shot. My one and only time I ever made it to the Bear Lake digging site, I found some really nice well-formed apatite crystals. And barely visible on the top were these tiny little orangey brown crystals. The only thing I can come up with from looking at the Mindat website is monazite. I'm taking a long shot on that one. So if somebody knows, again, let me know in the comments below. I think it's a beautiful little crystal, but honestly, I have no idea what it is. I'm going with Monazite, though. Bear Lake Diggings, Torrey Hill. And here we have some perfectly formed Marcasite crystals from a quarry near Hamilton, Ontario. Beautiful dark red color. It's kind of got that metallic sheen on it. I absolutely love the shape of these crystals. It, it always amazes me when I look at these under the digital microscope. So I tend to pick them up when I'm in a quarry because I know I'm going to look at them later. Absolutely crazy. This next specimen I just found out hiking in Hamilton. It was just a random rock I saw with some colors. So I said I better take that home and take a look at it. I mean it's crazy. They almost look like tiny little garnets. They're so deep in color. But that just shows you when you're out hiking you see a rock pick it up bring it home. You never know. Again, these are local rocks around the Hamilton, Ontario area. Up next, I think this is one I already showed, but I'm going to show it again. A long, perfect spire of marcasite frozen in selenite. Again, absolutely crazy. It doesn't have the keys that, you know, some of the other ones I showed has. It's just a long spire. 
Still crazy looking though. Beautiful. So coming up, we have some little red flurry cubes from Madoc. A lot of the flurry from the Madoc area tends to have the edges of the cubes have that little triangular notch out of the side. That's how you can tell it's from the Madoc area. Beautiful little, I think, hematite inclusions to give it the red color. Super microscopic. These ones kind of look like they have a bitumen coating, and that's why they have that metallic look. Crazy. It's amazing when you start looking super close to stuff you can find on these crystals. Up next, or as you can see, we got fluorite from the Niagara Falls from the Montrose dumps. Super microscopic, all these tiny little crystals stacked one on top of the other. The tiny dark areas around the edge of the crystals, some more bitumen again. And I think that's dolomite on the left there. Again, bitumen with the fluorite. Absolutely crazy. And this one fluoresced under shortwave light. Perhaps the best for last, quartz inclusions. These awesome pictures of red and black hematite frozen inside of quartz crystals. Absolutely crazy. It's created this beautiful rainbow effect. I see these little fractures inside the quartz. I'm not sure if that's when the crystal was solidifying with the hematite in it and it caused that, but I am by no means an expert in inclusions in quartz. To me, it's just beautiful to look at. Relaxing. These are some of my favorite pictures. Probably my top two or three from this whole video. And here, the chlorate has caused the crystals to turn this greenish color. And here you got these tiny little bubbles frozen in the quartz crystal. And this one puzzles me. I'm not sure if when the crystal was solidifying, forming, growing, it almost looks like the bubbles were rising up through and got frozen in time in the quartz crystal. It really makes me want to study up on how these inclusions happen in the quartz because to me, it's fascinating. I, I just can't fathom how this actually formed in Mother Nature. Now, this crystal makes me want to buy an actual proper, really powerful microscope because I'd like to see, is there air in these bubbles? Is there water in there? To me, it's just fascinating how these form. Somebody knows, again, let me know in the comments below. I, I hope you've enjoyed these pictures and these quartz one, they're right up there with some of my best of this slideshow. Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like what you see, as I said before, click like, click subscribe, and I will see you on the next microscopic mineral adventure. <laughs> Boat's coming through.